Uh, with that, I'd like to uh, also shout out a huge thanks to Jobvite for making today's event possible and helping bring together two speakers who are absolutely world-class experts in the industry and veterans who are continuing uh, to leverage some proven uh, recruiting best practices uh, to find and attract great candidates, uh, even uh, with its uh, lower technology approach. So with that, I'd like to kick it off uh, and introduce Steve Levy. Steve, uh, welcome, and uh, please tell everyone uh, just a little bit about yourself. Well, Matt, first thing, can you actually see the slide now? It says your presenters. I can. Okay, I am trying to figure out. It should be. It is showing. Everything is, should, should be showing. Let me try one more thing. I am seeing it. Now you see your presenters. Yes, I do. Finally, fabulous. So I just real quickly, this is what people missed. I'll go back. Tell me if you see the previous slide now. You see your face? Oh, we got it. We got it. Yeah, fabulous. We were, fine. So, I just uh, make it yeah. sure. This anyway, my, 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 name is Steve, my name is Steve Levy. I am a recruiting leader for a pretty well-known uh, technology company. I am uh, also an engineer who crossed over to the dark side. And I will forever remember my uh, initial introductions to Maureen Sharab. Mo? My name is Maureen Sharab, and I'm a phone sourcer. I'm here today with my very good friend, Steve Levy, to help you all understand a little bit about what I do and help Steve in any way I can. And uh, just so you know, a big shout out to uh, the recruiting animal. Uh, who is snarkily uh, tweeting along, who apparently uh, coined the term recruitersphere a long, long time ago and uh, did not trademark the hashtag. So, uh, too bad, too bad animal. Too bad. Uh, if it matters, uh, you know, Maureen has a, has a BA from the University of uh, Cincinnati in economics and something else. Uh, I have a BS in bioengineering and a uh, grad degree in IO psych, and neither of us, neither of us have any recruiting, sourcing, or HR certifications. Mo? I call into companies and I talk to people to find stuff out. Just and, what, and what I do is I sit in these companies and I make faces when people like Maureen call. Uh, I also train my employees about the evil ways of people like Maureen, and I do other things like running recruiting, strategy, massaging the egos of hiring managers, and building talent communities and uh, and pipelines. Mo, Steve and I met a long time ago on the fabled Electronic Recruiting Exchange. Many of you know it at today as ERE. The reason I'm bringing this story up is to tell you about the importance of telephone communication. And this is a story I've thought about many times over the years, and it's kind of painful for me to recount it to you today, but I'm going to for a reason. Steve didn't remember this. I had to remind him of it, but this is what happened. ERE, a long time ago, had groups. And in those groups, we could talk to each other. We could discuss different issues. And we were talking about recruiting stuff. And I was new to the forums. I was new to the groups. And they were all talking about applicant tracking systems one day. Well, they were using acronyms. And I didn't know what an ATS meant. I was new to sourcing. I was new to recruiting. And I didn't know much about anything. I wrote a story today. It's over in the, in the groups on Facebook. It's in Sources Unleashed. It's on Recruiters Online. And it's in a couple other groups that tells this story in more detail. However, um, Steve happened to catch my frustration and ire over the fact that I didn't know what they were talking about, so I made a, a nasty, snarky remark about something. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was really over the fact that I was frustrated that I couldn't understand what they were talking about. They were talking about ATS. Well, I didn't know what that meant. So I made the remark and I left the group and went about my business that day. And a few minutes later, my telephone rang. 
And I, I remember where I was, what I was doing. I was in my bedroom and I was getting dressed. I picked up the phone. It was Steve Levy. And he goes, Maureen? I said, yes. And he said, um, this is Steve Levy. I almost paid him. I knew what I had done. I made this snarky, nasty remark in the group. And here I was being called out on it, I thought. And Steve was calling me, really, to introduce himself. And he was so nice. He was so kind. He was so gentle to me. And he was reaching across this divide. And if you have time, read my story. But my point in this telling you the story today is he, he made a friend that day. And I'll never forget it. And he called to introduce himself to tell me what an applicant tracking system was. And it seems, so, it seems funny today, but it was such an important turning point in my life. And I hope to convey to you today, and I think Steve does too, what the telephone can do for you, just reaching out and talking to somebody. Steve, did I put you to sleep? <laughs> Steve. Steve? Steve, I'm going to let you take this next one. Can you hear me now? Okay, now, now the, yeah, now, the, the, the thing is that, that Maureen's telling is that high touch beats high tech almost every time when it comes to recruiting. Both of us are, 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 are old school sourcers. I'm as geeky as they get. But the bottom line is most people find it just plain scary to talk to people, uh, primarily because they're afraid of that one special word, no. And uh, hopefully today we'll give you some uh, some some tips as to way to ways to uh, 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 you know cross that divide and 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 turn no's into yeses. Mo, your turn now. All right. Throughout this presentation today, um, we're going to pop in some phone sourcing tips. They're going to be quick and dirty, and we're not going to take a lot of time, you know, discussing the minutia of it. But I hope you enjoy it. Um, at some point, go through this slide deck and study them in more detail. And I think they'll be helpful for you in your phone sourcing in the future. Um, the, one of the most important things in phone sourcing, when a gatekeeper answers, listen very, very carefully. It's mo much more important to listen on a phone sourcing call than it is to talk. If she says her name when you call, write it down. Maureen, this is, this, no, this is still you. I mean, uh, your turn. Okay. Everybody knows how to do these things. Everybody knows how to find people on the Internet, find their email addresses, you know, find their, sniff out their exhaust signals, find out about them, find tools that create email messages that, around this, that sniffing technology, and even use that sniffing technology to send those emails. Well, the thing is, what you don't know how to do is how to find a person's direct dial where they work, how to call into a company without going through the gatekeeper, how to procure a person's cell phone or their personal email, uh, how to learn who everyone is who works in a particular office, you know, almost creating the org chart, and what their titles are, and finally how to talk to someone that makes them feel like they want to talk to you for more than just 15 seconds. And the other thing that, that we're, we're going to talk about are, are, are the things that you know the the more esoteric you know high touch engagement pieces um, most recruiters and sources don't do enough work with Amazon they don't uh, know how to uh, use Amazon they don't know how to do face to face work in meetups business card moles one of my favorite is coffee condoms I have some good tips for that later down the line doctors dentists you can you know uh, and any any person that you go to for uh, you know uh, you know personal issues um, recruiting teachers, religion, you know, rabbis and, and priests and, 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 and monsignors all are, have very special powers. Supermarket ads. We'll be discussing these, a few of these a little, little later down the line. Maureen uh, will go first. She's going to talk about phone sourcing. When she's done, I'm going to talk about engagement sourcing. Mo? Okay. Um, here's a phone sourcing tip. When the gatekeeper answers, it's very, very simple. Just say hello. Repeat her name if she said it. Tell her your name. 
and ask her what you want her to do for you. Don't say anything else. Don't tell her you're calling from such and such a company. Don't do a song and dance. Um, a slide or two back, Steve made a remark about how to make someone feel like they want to talk to you for more than 15 seconds. That's part of what this is today. You going back, Steve? How to make someone feel like they want to talk to you for more than 15 seconds. In other words, um, when you call someone, how do you engage that person? How do you get them to want to talk to you? These are a few ways I do it. Um, when I call someone, I, I will say to them, my name is Maureen Sherub and you don't know me. It's a great icebreaker. Um, sometimes I'll hear silence on the other end of the line. Once in a while, the, the other person will say, no, I don't know you. And then it might take my next step. I'll tell them why, why I'm calling. Many times I'll call um, candidates. I'll do that first touch. Well, I'm calling you in regards to an opportunity. And I, I go on. Um, when I'm doing that type of work, candidate engagement, making that first step, I'll say to the candidate, I, I work as a sort of Girl Friday to whoever it is I'm working with, and you can call me anytime. It's a great um, trade-off when you're working with a recruiter um, so that that candidate can reach back to me if he's not hearing from that recruiter. It works very well. And it's a kind of a comfort zone for that candidate. Um, I, I'm very direct with candidates. I say, I don't know hardly anything about what you do. I'm sorry I sound so dumb. I've been this way all my life. You know, it's a, and again, it's another icebreaker. It might be easier for women to say that to men than it is for men to say that to men. I don't know, but, um, you know, that's a, a one by one situation. But again, it's another great icebreaker. Um, a great way to stay in touch and to get more information from a candidate, if he says, no, I'm not interested in that, I'll say, would you like me to stay in touch with you about upcoming opportunities? Very few people say no to that. What? No, I'm not interested in advancing my career. No, they just don't say no to that. Um, and then when they do say no, to, when they do say yes to that, I'll, I'll say, well, is email the best way to reach you? And they usually will say yes to that. And I'll say, well, is this the best number to call you? And they'll they might say, well, um, yeah, this is a good number. And then I'll say, well, I didn't call you directly. They transferred to me to you. Um, is, can you tell me your extension? And they'll give me their extension. And then I'll say, well, do you have a cell I could also call you on? Many times they'll give me their cell at that point. But the point I'm trying to get to is just ask one question at a time. And every time they give you one piece of information, you're getting a, a step closer to them giving you another piece of information. So you don't want to ask for the whole thing at one time. You don't want to say, well, can you give me your email and your cell and your, your extension number? You don't want to ask for all those things at one time. Just ask for one thing at a time. And each time they give you something, they'll give you something else. You know, Maureen, let me just add in here. Um, you know, there's really a revelation in having this type of conversation. Uh, I mentioned before um, that there's one of the best books I've ever read, uh, read is called Getting to Yes. You're all sources and you, know, you can find and read this book. It, it's about instead of just you know giving someone an entire buffet to eat all at once, give them a little piece of food. And then they're hungry for the next piece of food and so on and so forth. Frankly, you know, I'm finding and I think Maureen will, will share that people are desperate to speak with other people. This goes to something you know larger here. but there's a tremendous loneliness problem in, in in America, and not just America, other places. And I think it worked. You know, if you if you hit people, poor choice of words on my part. If you're gentle with people, one small question at a time, you'll find that they will share a lot of information with you. Absolutely. And that story I told before about how Steve and I met. Um, and again, if you'll read my story on Facebook in the groups, I was in a really bad place in my life. I was totally shut down. Well, not that. I wasn't totally shut down, but I had been totally shut down. And um, I was coming out of it. And, and, you know, Steve reaching out to me meant a tremendous amount to me at that point in my life. And by the way, we're not married to each other in case you're, you're wondering about these sort of things. Um, that's Bob. That's Bob. 
Next slide. Here's an example, Mo. Here's a phone sourcing tip. Um, you know, when you, this is how to, to reach employees directly at their desks. This is how I do it. Um, you know, when you look at a company's phone numbers, um, sometimes they'll have two different phone numbers listed. One will be a telephone direct dial. In this event, the telephone number to Compass Automation, their main number is 847-250-0475. But their fax number, always look at their fax number. It, it has a different area code, 630-503-5070. Um, you don't often, you don't very often at all see that, a different area code, but that's a, cl a clue to me that the employees' direct dials might be at 630-503, some variant beyond 5070. So if I were trying to reach the, that company's employees, the first, my first stab would be at 630-503-5071. 5072, etc. And then in the next one, go to the next one, Steve. I just want to talk a little bit about the next one. Um, in this case, um, this one shares the same area code, but again, different prefixes. If I wanted to find this company's employees sitting at their desks, my first stab would be at their fax prefix 310643. 9489, 9490. Uh, my bet would be that their employees sit at that, at, in those number ranges. And then the next one, my bet at this one would be their employees sit at 805-523-7503-0405. If you have any questions about this, send me an email and I'll explain it further. Well, here's a subtle one. Marie, why in this case do you, uh, are you saying they're 703, 704, 705? I, I know it's kind of obvious, but let's just be a little more, more detailed. Because they're sharing the same prefix. This company is sharing the same prefix between the main dial and the fax, 805-523. And the numbers appear to run close, 7,500. 7, and then the fax is at 7502. So my bet is the employees are lying out beyond that at 7503, 7504, 7505. Let's look at the previous one one, one more time. Okay. Uh, in this case, because you know this is a little bit uh, small here, but uh, why did you choose the uh, 643 versus the 536 for this? Because the employees many times will be at the fax number. When, when there's a difference between the phone, the main phone and the fax, the employees many times are at the fax. Is, it, is, is, is there any coincidence that the 1-800 number is a 643 and the fax number is a 643? No. Is there a coincidence? No, but I'll bet if you got 310-643-0688, it's the same company. Okay. Let's go more here. I didn't, uh, I didn't catch that, Steve, to tell you the truth when I put that slide in there. Um, here's something else. Don't ever call 800 numbers. One, if you're using um, call block, 800 numbers unblock your call blocks. But beyond that, calling 800 numbers is a pain in the rear end. Um, it's more likely to drop you into voicemail hell than calling their non-800 numbers. So you, I, I know occasionally when you call me, you have your, um, you know, call blocking on. Sometimes. So uh, you know, at what time uh, are, there, are there any reasons for, for for turning it on or turning it off that you that you've come about? Come when to I can know. Candidates when I'm doing candidate engagement, um, I don't use it. But when I'm sourcing, I do use it because I just don't want people calling me back. Haven't helped them to do that because in a previous example, you're 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 the girl fraud, and you say you give them permission to call you back, and now you're saying you want them to call you back. You don't want them to call you back. It's a well, when crazy. I'm doing engagement, I do, I turn it off. I I don't care that they know. So tell me, tell me about this really intriguing thing called stabbing in. That sounds stabbing hurtful. Stabbing in is one of the most efficient. Um, phone sourcing techniques there is. It's when you just 
Um, you, you know the company's direct dials and you just call in. Um, it doesn't, you don't know who you're calling. And for instance, when I can't deal with a gatekeeper, and I hit gatekeepers that I can't deal with, I just find the internal dials and I call into the company. Um, I don't know who I'm calling. Whoever answers the phone, I say to, to them, hi, this is Maureen Sherub. I know I have the wrong number. Can you help me? I'm trying to reach development. Can you get me there? And the guy sits up and he goes, well, yeah, I guess so. And, you know, he reaches for his computer and he opens up the directory. Many times that's the way it happens. And no, Steve, that's not rusing. I told him the truth. Hi, this is Maureen Sheriff. I know I have the wrong number. I do know I have the wrong number. Are, aren't you splitting hairs here? Did, haven't we had this, didn't we have this discussion on ERE some 15 years ago? No, no. I could tell you rusing stories that would make your hair curl. That's not rusing. Of course, I don't have any hair to curl, so we'll just have to you know, trust you on that one. Okay, so it's not rusing. There you go. Mo? This is yours, too. Is this mine? Everyone can speak on the phone, but not everyone can communicate. I think this is yours, Steve. Okay, fine. So everyone, you know, it's easy to pick up on the phone, uh, pick up the phone and call people, but the communication part is is kind of dubious. Uh, I get calls pretty much every other day from recruiters trying to, you know, pitch me on their wares, and most of the time, all my, all I'm hearing is Schroeder's piano teacher, wah 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 wah, because there's nothing in the message that gets to me. Uh, one of the things that I, I, I've learned through the years, and I was not good at this, again, I'm just a dumb old engineer across over to the dark side, is that if you want to do well in recruiting, you're going to have to learn to speak very, very well on the phone, think on your feet, be glib, be professional, be funny, be serious. And if you do, then chances are you're going to make a good deal of, of, of money. Um, you always want to focus on a single call at hand. Multitasking does not work well when you're doing candidate development. It just doesn't. I can vouch for it a thousand times over. Uh, when you're doing this, you want to avoid all distractions. Close the door. You know, turn off Spotify. Uh, you know, uh, close your eyes if you have to do it. Stand up. Sometimes when I'm making some hard calls, I'm going to stand up. You know, stand up straight. Because the thing is, the person on the other end, they know when you're not listening intently. And when you show disinterest to them, that shows disrespect. And you only have one chance to make a first impression. And this is and this is the chance. Can you go back to that? Um, remember this morning when we were talking and you were telling me something about this presentation and um, Animal um, I am me and I, I you said Mo Mo because I wasn't paying attention. Do you remember that? Um, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. Okay. <laughs> but yes, I, of course I remember that. But, that. but that's the whole thing. Even when you're doing something with friends, even friends know when you are distracted. The but difference the, is, we're going to tell tone, you. The tone of the silence are changes. The quality of the silence changes. Um, that almost sounds like a, a, a horror movie, the quality of the silence. That, 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 that could be the next, next, next recruiting tome that we write. Okay. Uh, this is yours. Yeah, um, calling someone on the telephone you don't know and striking up a conversation is the social equivalent of skydiving. It's frightening. It's thrilling. It's an extreme social sport. Uh, the problem is... Um, with, with all these things, and, and, and the metaphor may not be appropriate, but skydiving is 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 scary. Um, you know, but no one will 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 do these things. No one will jump out of a plane unless they have checked their parachute three or four times over the mechanisms. Uh, if you don't have, if you're just calling haphazardly, if you're doing candidate development haphazardly without a plan, without uh, you know record keeping in front of you. Uh, you're going to make a mistake. You you can't just write all stuff down on a piece of paper and expect to translate it when you when the calls are done. You have to be you know rigid in your in your preparedness. Uh, mm -hmm. Put things down as you see them. You know write neatly or or you know one of the things Maureen has always talked talked about was a silent keyboard so people can't hear you type. 
while you're calling in. Uh, you know, you, you have to be prepared before you, you do any of these things. Another tip of yours. Yeah, don't call the gatekeeper and say, hi, how you doing today? He doesn't give a, she knows you don't give a rat's ass how she's doing today. It just ticks her off and uh, you're wasting her valuable time. Don't do it. You know, this is a lot what I talked about at, uh, at, at, at SourceCon. It's, it's about the honesty. Uh, yeah. Most people know why you're calling in on them uh, if, if you're in full engagement, you know, sourcing mode. Uh, so don't lie to them. You know, tell them exactly what it is. You know, the, the honesty has becomes uh, such a commodity that is that is lacking that when it's used, it becomes refreshing and it makes right. our, makes our job just that much easier. That's right. Yours. Maureen? Yeah, when your phone rings, don't answer it on the first or second, or don't answer it on the first call, because you're likely to be doing something else. Give yourself time to collect yourself. Answer it on the second or the third ring, um, so you can avoid being, uh, you know, harried or surprised. Um, if you can't do that, just don't answer it. Let it go to voicemail and, and return the call. But in any, any event, sound like you're happy that the person called and like you are ready to be of service to the caller. I mean, what we're talking about here is when, when you've left a voicemail with someone who you're trying to engage and they call you back, right. you know, it's the same thing. You want to sit up straight, take a big breath, smile, give them a, right. hello, this is Steve, how can I help you? Something right. of that sort. Right. And if any of you are listening that are working for yourselves, Answer your phone like you're running a business. Um, Tech Track, this is Maureen speaking. You uh, let the caller know that they're calling a business and that they've reached the right person. Um, you know, the, the challenge here is that when you are calling in to somebody, you don't, what you don't want to do is, is essentially say, you know, ask for permission to speak with them. I mean, that sort of puts them up puts a, a, a roadblock up already, if you will, and you want to actually inspire them to have a conversation with you. It, it is that the, it's almost a one-liner. You know, it, if, if you start with this line, you know, do you have the time? I, I know personally, and, when, and this, this happens a tremendous amount with, with, with younger and experienced recruiters who call in. Uh, hi, this is uh, Steve. Uh, I am from, I can't mention the agency because you all know it. Uh, do you have some time to talk? No, I don't. That, that, that's an that's an absolute. That's what I'm, no, I don't. That's not how. That's not how you you know you 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 get me to speak with you, Mo. Exactly. But if you listen carefully when you call in to someone, they answer the phone. If they answer the phone, they have time to talk. Just assume that. But if you hear you know horns horns blaring in the background, it sounds like the guy's driving, cue into that and say, oh, it sounds like maybe you're driving, maybe I should call you back later. You know, the guys might say, uh, no, hey, I've got 20 more miles to go, now's a good time to talk. You know, he'll respond to the fact that you're listening to what's going on in his life. And that's true. It, it's, it's remarkable that, you know, I've I've had it happen to me, and I, I, I do that fairly liberally when I call into people, um, is, is I will listen to all the background noises, and I'll make some comment about it, uh, you know, just because it's part of the getting the yes process, you know, inspiring them to want to speak with you, because it, as Maureen said, you're listening to them, you know, you're, you're actually listening to what's going on in the background. Maureen? Um. Before we go to this slide, let me mention something else. When I'm calling, when I'm phone sourcing and I'm calling gatekeepers, I'm always listening to what's going on in her background. I put myself in her space. So if I hear a lot of phones ringing, phones ringing, um, and she sounds harried, I'll say to her, uh, Mary, go ahead and answer that. I can wait. And sometimes she'll put me on hold and she'll come back and She'll forget where she is, and I'll say, well, you were telling me who so-and-so was, and she'll pick right back up. She'll forget that she's giving me, you know, an org chart or why she's doing it or for whatever reason, just because I'm, 
I'm listening and I'm putting myself into the challenges that she has. And okay. you know, we don't want to get into 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 linguistics mode here, but practice calls before you make them. If you're new to sourcing, and I know there are a couple of folks on this call who are new to sourcing, practice you know, with, with somebody who can respond to you. Um, you know, we say you know, the, 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 the words that you're using, the, the tones, they're the body language of the telephone call. And if you're using words that just are negative in nature, and I can't come up with any at this moment, uh, the person will, will play off I of can. it. I can. I can. Okay, well, fine. Like sarcasm, like for like for example, when when I speak when I speak to people like like Matt Charney, uh, there's it's always dripping with sarcasm, and so we know that that is the that, that is going to be the tone of the conversation. Maureen, no, something, I just um, what you want to add? No, I was reading an article and um, it was a good point. The author made. She said, "Don't call and say I'm. This is Maureen Sherab." I'm, I'm just calling. When you say, I'm just calling, you marginalize yourself. Well, these are some okay. of the words. I guess you're talking about these iffy words, right? Oh, the iffy words. Don't use the iffy words. So what, what are these iffy, iffy words again? I was just calling. Um, I was hoping maybe you could call me back. That's, a, that's an iffy sentence. It's like, I don't really matter. I'm hoping maybe you could call me back. This is not like this. You is give, like the, you're giving the other person. This is not like the call. You're giving me the other person. Right. Well, you're giving the other person permission to dismiss you. And so, are 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 there words that are far more positive? Instead of saying "I was just calling," what would you use instead? I was calling. Instead of "I was hoping," I was what would you say? If we could discuss. So instead of hoping, you wouldn't even use the word hoping. No. And you wouldn't even use the word maybe, would you? I have used. What? No, we have an internet. We have an internet glitch here I'm today. Sorry. It must. It, it must be Snowmageddon kicking in. So, so again, you you would just use positive words and not negative iffy words. I would try. Yes. Okay. Uh, here's another phone sourcing tip for you. Maureen, here's another phone sourcing tip. Okay, um, don't ask a gatekeeper for more than one thing at a time. Wait for her to answer one question before asking another. Listen carefully to her answers as she gives them for signs that she may be growing weary of answering your questions because they do grow weary. Um, most gatekeepers have limits to their patience. The trick is in exiting her stage before she begins to ask you questions about why you need to know the questions you're asking. I know that sounds complicated, but once you do what, what I'm once you do some phone sourcing, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But a good place to start it is do not ask for more than one thing at a time. Okay. Next is leaving voicemails. How would you leave a voicemail, Mo? Um, well, it's, remember, when you leave a voicemail and they don't call you back, don't get frustrated. Um, it's not about you. You know, people have a lot of things going on in their lives. So just because they don't call you back doesn't mean they're ignoring you. They're just, they just might be busy. You know, the dog might have died. They might be out of town. They may be sick. There's a million reasons, and I know all of you have experienced this. You're thinking, oh, he doesn't want to do business with me. When, you know, the guy calls you in three weeks and he goes, oh, I was really, you know, I've been really busy, I've been out of town, I was on vacation, and, and you think to yourself, oh, that's why he didn't call me. So, you know, you've got all these things going on in your head, and none of them are applicable. So when you leave a message, try not to create phone tag. Um, tell the person you're calling when you're calling, you know, what time it is. In other words, say, hi, this is Maureen. It's 9.30 on a Tuesday. On, on Tuesday, I'll be here until 2. If you can call me back, that would be great. But if you can't, don't worry about it. I'll call you back tomorrow. So um, you, you're telling the person you'll call them back tomorrow. So they think in their heads, well, she's going to call me tomorrow, so I may as well call her back. That's yeah. kind of how that works. 
Okay, so we can move on to some other things here. Uh, another phone sourcing tip. They actually, this is just this, this. In fact, is just what you said. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, and, well, and the, key, the, key, the, the, the key is the bullet down there. Yeah. As you said. Don't leave you know. too much information. Yes. Don't leave too much information because if you leave too much information, the person starts to answer the things that you're talking about in their heads, and they they think, oh well, I've already answered her, that her, and, and they forget to call you back. So if you huh. say to them, oh, can you meet me next Tuesday uh, at Starbucks to have coffee, they think to themselves, no, I've got a dentist appointment, and so they think, to, oh, I've, I told her I can't make, meet her, and so they don't call you back. Uh, now I'm going to move on to this a little engagement sourcing piece. Um, this is some of the stuff that I've, I've spoken about at SourceCon, some of the stuff I've written about on RBC and other places. Um, these are some of the things that I use to engage people. I'm not going to talk about all these. I'm going to pick out a few of these because this is you do doing engagement sourcing means you you have to be exceptionally creative and uh, and 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 think and act outside your comfort zone, which is uh, you know kind of difficult for many in recruiting. So I'm going to talk about things like and many of you, I'm sure many people on here know this stuff. How to use Amazon for sourcing, uh, business card bowls. Uh, coffee condoms. It's a horrible name, but I've been using it for uh, you know twenty some odd years, so I'm not going to change. A um, few things: uh, recruiting T-shirts, supermarket ads, uh, Twitter lists. Uh, we'll talk about. I'll give you, give you some examples for each. Uh, the whole concept of your engagement sourcing is differentiation. If your sourcing strategy is the same as everybody else's, how special does that really make you? I'm sure there are many people here whose job ads say, we're the leading this, we're the leading that, we only hire the best and the brightest, blah, 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 barf. Problem is it's not true. Uh, not everyone is leading. Uh, some people are actually, uh, some companies are actually the 18th best company in the world. And, you know, just by hiring someone, you're not going to jump up to the first best kind of company. You know, you, you know, if you hire someone really great, you might get to 16, maybe 15 or 14 if they're really, really good. Uh, what you really want to do here, the concept behind it, is creating and marketing good buzz about the company that, um, as I say in the last year, in the last bullet, it causes people to respond like a golden retriever. What I mean by that is if, if you have a golden retriever and you try to speak a foreign language to them, they'll tilt their head to the side and almost go, huh? But they don't run away because they're really interested. Uh, ultimately, you know, we are in a golden age of recruiting now where there's a lot of technology, but we seem to forget that the tools don't do the sourcing of the recruiting. People do, which means we're connecting to people. And I think overall as a profession, we've done a, not a particularly good job of connecting with, with people who we're trying to engage. Um, a couple of engagements, this is my engagement sourcing tip, and, and I'm going to read this out loud because you know, these three are pretty critical. This talent you're attempting to lure with your recruiting baubles is a human being just like you are. They read, they eat, they shop, they work out just like normal folks. None of them are CFOs, developers, tax analysts, or call center managers 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So ultimately, when you're going after certain people, you, you really need to know what they're like. You need to know their likes. You need to know their dislikes, their favorite things, the things they don't like, some of their personality quirks. If you're doing global stuff like I do, some of the different cultural elements. And you know, the barrier to entry to recruiting is interesting and, and, and it's pretty easy to get into recruiting and sourcing, but it also has a has a side effect. And the side effect is that people who are trying to engage are emotionally scarred from other sources and recruiters who don't take the personal interest in 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 in, in the people. They're just merely meat that can be used to you know, fill a void, fill a job. Uh, so I'm going to talk about a couple of uh, sourcing tips here. Uh, one of them is, I call it Amazon tip. I, I, I don't know how long ago I've used this, but it, it's been a long time. You know, I read books. Developers read books. People read books. So what I just did was I just went to Amazon and I Googled it for I just looked for books that are JavaScript based. 
And here, look, one of the first people uh, reviewed just a, you know, just a couple of days ago by Leanne Kinney. She's got a lot of reviews. This book is great. The tutorials that the that accompany it make a great way for beginning to learn JavaScript. Blah 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 blah. If I'm a source or a recruiter, I'm going to find out who Leanne Kinney is, and I'm going to comment her because I'm going to read a lot of her reviews too. So there's that personal connection when I finally reach out to you and the, out to her. And the assumption here is that she knows she, if she's reviewing a book about JavaScript, I bet you she knows JavaScript pretty well. So that becomes a, a, a way to get to her, her community, uh, her, her uh, you know, fellow you know, JavaScript people. Another one here, people, I, I, it, I even have, look at that, I have people, I have an error here. So I have made a, a, a tragic mistake here. But what they should have said is people like to eat and they like to get free food. So where does this happen? How many of you uh, have ever gone to a restaurant with your friends at work and you see that business card bowl and if you put your business card in there, you have a chance to win a free meal for your entire office or just two people. One of the things that I've been doing for a very long time is when I uh, identify, a, a, you know, when I'm working with a company and identify their uh, competitors, I will find the restaurants where their people eat and I will go to the restaurant, I'll look at that business card bowl, yeah, I'll stick my hand in the business card bowl and kind of rifle through, through these. But what I'll also do is I'll go to the manager of the restaurant and I'll ask him, what do they do at the end of the week with all the business cards? And they invariably say, we throw them out. So I say, how about 40, 50 bucks for the whole bowl of business cards? They go, we have got a deal. And there I have names of business cards, I have the contact information, they can, when I reach out to them I can say, hey, we like the same restaurant. I will have to eat there first because you know I, I won't ruse, so I'll have to eat at the restaurant too. So the restaurant wins in every every way possible. Here's another tip. Um, that, uh, the, the words didn't quite come out right. Uh, a condom tip. Um, you know, coffee and tea is hot. You know, what about the openings? One of the things I I started this back in the late actually mid 90s. I moved a company from Connecticut to Pennsylvania to an area where there was 2.5 percent unemployment and our top two competitors were within 20 miles of us. Uh, it was horrible trying to get people. What I ended up doing was realizing there that people uh, from the companies like to get their morning coffee at Wawa. So this was, I, I went to a company that made these hot sl uh, coffee sleeves and I said how much would it cost to print up 10,000 of them with logos from our company and some of the needs that we're looking for. It was very inexpensive. I mean, think these days uh, you get a thousand sleeves for about $52. And then I just distributed them free to all the Wawa's in the area. And so every time someone will get a hot coffee, they get a hot coffee sleeve. Little by little, folks started calling me based upon that. Again, it's very, very low tech, but it's very, very high engagement. Another engagement sourcing, t-shirt tips. Uh, people like to work out. You can see I did a lot of cutting and pasting here earlier today. Well, so do you. Why not combine marketing and sweating? Um, I've done this a, a few times. If you give your employees, uh, especially if you, if, if you reimburse them for, for working out in gym memberships, give them gym membership career, you know, gym career t-shirts. You know, uh, if you were wearing this shirt, you'd be working with me by now. Any phrase that works will get other people to, um, you know, just kind of t head, head tilt away and wonder, you know, why somebody who is uh, sweating so much still promoting their company. Uh, you know, if, uh, you know, ask, ask me about working here, things of that nature. It's up to your imagination and, and, uh, and, and budget. But um, again, you can't beat the free publicity, you know, especially here in New York, we have a lot of tech companies. Uh, you know, wearing these to the gym is a good way to little by little create quiet buzz and high engagement. Uh, one of my favorite things, um, I can't remember the first time I did this, people have to food shop, so why not hit them up here? You know, uh, even developers and CFOs, they, they eat, they don't, they don't, not all of them call Seamless or Grubhub. Some of them actually shop. I know that for a fact. You know, you can talk to people in your company. You ask them, where do you buy your food? 
What supermarket do you go to? Go to the community board. And I lost my picture of one that I've done recently, but you know uh, those apartment for rent uh, pull-off things? You know, it's, it's like a, an 8 by 11 sheet of paper, horizontal, with tabs, with a phone number on it. Imagine if you were looking for, doesn't matter, a, a developer, a tax person, you write that big copy in, in, in big letters using some, you know, real funky functional based language, people will see it. I don't know about you, I'm drawn to these boards. You know, the return, the, the, the recruiting efficiency ratio for this source of hire certainly won't be as high as, you know, say employee referrals, but it's just another arrow in your quiver that gets the word out and shows that, in my opinion, oh, this company is, 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 is thinking a little bit different than, uh, than say, oh, I can't name the name of the company here. It would be bad of me. Uh, so but it's just, a, yes. Just a uh, heads up, we're about five minutes before q and Absolutely, as I said. So again, um, I can, uh, uh, anybody who has questions about these, shoot me a tweet. I'll give you an example for, for, for each one of them. Uh, you know, finally, um, uh, in terms of sourcing people, whether it's phone or whether it's um, uh, other methods, uh, there's a saying is you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. You don't want to lead the horse to water when it comes to sourcing. You just want to make them thirsty. And finally, beyond every Boolean, behind every high-tech technique is, a human, is someone like you, and you're going to help them make very important career choices. So the most important thing you can do is be human to them. And it's question time, Matt. Ah, wow, that was that was that was well timed. I apologize for the interruption, but there was def definitely a lot of great information there. And so, um, I think in going back to the uh, the phone sourcing element, Maureen, we got a question: What is the best time of day and week uh, to get candidates on the phone? That's a good question. Um, Mondays and Fridays are rough days, I think because, you know, Mondays and Fridays. I like to work Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays um, to engage people. And I like, I'm an early riser, so I like the morning time slots. But I don't really think there's a good time, bad time, because everybody has their own, um, you know, when, it's when you feel good working, you know, Choose those times. Don't work. Don't work against your own body clocks. <laughs> so, so what you're saying is, if I'm recruiting in Singapore, then no, I can't help it. So, and look, I, I think sometimes, depending on on where you're, where the people are, I, I think you actually have to adjust your body clock. Well, you mean if you're do, if you're working overseas? Yes. Well, it's true. I do most of my work here in the United States and in North America. But yeah, if you have to work overseas, it's more challenging. Great. <laughs> uh, so um, second question uh, that we got in on phone sourcing is, um, do you recommend calling from, uh, from uh, companies? Uh, line or from a personal cell phone if you're not going to be blocking or restricting the call? I don't recommend calling from cell phones. I recommend calling from a landline. Um, cell phones are difficult to, for me personally, they're difficult to manage. Um, my cell phone's not here, but my landline is not here either. But it's just easier to, for me to um, manipulate a, a, a desk phone than it is a cell phone. Matt, if I can interject, Maureen, what about uh, landlines versus uh, companies like Vonage or, you know, Internet phones? What are your thoughts on them? To my knowledge, you can't block a, uh, an Internet phone. Does anybody can have contrary information on that? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think you can block an, a cell phone. Well, I know you, I know you can block a cell phone. You can block a cell phone? Yeah, but it, it all depends on the service. Really? We can, yeah, well, I'll, I'll show you offline. Okay. Matt, any more questions? Yeah, we, we do have a couple more questions. How, in leaving voicemails and trying to contact the candidate through multiple sources, 
Um, how much is too much? They say it takes, well, I've read that it takes five, at least five voicemails to get somebody to call you back. Now, that might seem like a lot to a lot of people, but how do you feel about leaving five voicemails? I asked the audience that question. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that that seems uh, relatively work intensive for most. Is there any way to, to increase those numbers or, or get that five down at all? Um, in, the, in the context of the voicemail itself? Well, I think the example that I gave when I call and I say, hi, this is Maureen calling, it's 2 on Tuesday and I'll be here until 5. If you could call me back today, great, but if not, don't worry about it, I'll call you back tomorrow. That's kind of a push to the person to call me back because they know I'm going to be calling back tomorrow. That, that seems to increase my callback ratios. Okay, great. Um, another question we got in, what about texting? In what regard? Uh, I assume as a, as a way to... Well, to read, I, I guess, well, you know, here's, here's what I do. I, mean, I, I will text once, once I've made some connection to somebody, uh, that, that's when I'll, I'll, I'll go to text because I'll, I'll, I'll go there because I'll ask them what they prefer. Um, I, I have actually uh, received text messages sourcing me and I just think they're dumber than dirt. They, I just look at them and, and it just, I guess like anything else, Matt, it depends on, on, on the message and, uh, you know, how customized it is. Um, I mean, I, I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm looking at some um, tweets that have, that have come into me um, that are, you know, tweets are a lot like, DMs are a lot like text messages and some of these are so dumb they're painful. And so I, I, I am not going to send, personally not going to source with text messages unless, um, you know, somehow someone says, this is, this is their, you know, if you give me someone's phone number and say, hey, they're expecting you to call, I might text them first. Okay. Uh, I don't know what that means. Um, are there, oh, go ahead. I think texting is a generational issue for um, persons of Steve and my age, um, when someone... Whoa, 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 whoa. It's just, you know, inside every boomer is a millennial just waiting to get out and create a startup. So just, I, just, just so you know. We wish we were younger, I know. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but I think it's a generational issue, and it's much more embraced by younger generations than it is us. But um, I, I, I would have a tough time sourcing using a text. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay, great. Um, and then uh, this, is a, this is another question we got. Are there any tactics in particular that recruiters have abandoned that you'd like to see brought back? Yeah. <laughs> Other than the phone, obviously. I'm going to let Steve answer that. Oh, great. I'm, I'm looking around because, um, you know, I've been recruiting for a long time. So what did I do when I started doing it. You know, not, nothing, nothing is, I don't think they've abandoned anything. Uh, I, I think a lot of these old school, you know, being able to talk to people and are, are, I think these are coming back. Uh, look, I remember my first conversations with recruiters out of college in, in 1980. Um, uh, that's when I first thought they were, you know, Matt Shawnee's favorite word. Um, but they, they were it, it. It was such a closed wall to the profession back there. So, um, so in, in, no, I can't think of if 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 um, you know making people feel bad, uh, not getting back to them. Uh, boy, that sounds like today also. So no, 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 nothing. I can't think of a single one old thing other than you know, going back to being nice to people and, you know, being honest and, you know, picking up the phone and talking to them. And I, I don't see an issue. I, 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 nothing from the old days do I want back, at least technique-wise. If, 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 that, if that question asker has something in mind, you know, we are all monitoring the, uh, the, the Twitter stream, so they could throw that in there. Okay. Uh, and would encourage them to do so. 
So um, with that, uh, I, I think we are actually out of uh, all the questions and, and almost out of time. So I'd like to thank Maureen and Steve for dropping some great knowledge and tips for us, particularly on some uh, critical competencies we don't often talk about. And I'd like to especially thank Jobbike for making today's presentation possible. For all attendees and registrants for this webinar, you will be receiving an email with a copy of the slide deck as well as a recording within 48 hours. With that, I'd like to thank you for joining us and hope everyone has a great day. Good luck recruiting out there.